Okay, this is uh, Hot FM 107.9 and Hot TV Channel 12 uh, bringing you live and exclusive coverage of uh, runoff elections in Liberia. Today is the 26th of December, AD 2017, and uh, we're gradually moving through the streets of Monrovia and parts adjacent, uh, moving through several voting precincts across the country. We've left the Bujra Island uh, Belt. We've left the Clara Town area. We visited several polling precincts across, uh, as we can say in Liberia, across the bridge, uh, which include the Vi Town, the Clara Town, the Bujo Island community. And now we moving uh, subwards. We moving towards the Pinsville area. We sit around Central Monrovia, around Clay Street, the Clay Street and UN Drive intersection. And uh, we're having a nice time here uh, trying to bring you a live coverage of the happenings on uh, runoff day in Liberia. Of course, the entire crew is here. Here is there, Joseph Duo, uh, our own uh, Abel camera guy, uh, Nick, and uh, Eugene Jones, uh, uh, Kyan Oliver Kyan, and of course, James F. Colley. We're having a wonderful experience uh, driving through the principal streets of Monrovia, uh, ensuring that you have live coverage of uh, voting activities. And what we've observed at the several polling places across the country is uh, there has been an improvement uh, in services as far as the number of persons that have been served in record time. Uh, we've noticed that the number of persons that have been uh, served in terms of the number of persons that have voted uh, has, has quite improved owing to the improvement in the capacity building uh, initiative by the National Elections Commission. And we've, we've seen with uh, much admiration that a lot of people have come and voted in quite short period of time and gone back to to their, their various homes and this is incredible uh, we can assure you that if this is continued we will have a smooth ceiling all throughout the country and so we're somewhere around the, the executive mansion uh, we've just passed the temple of justice uh, we've just passed the temple of justice and uh, the camera the camera will show you Liberia's executive mansion and this building was uh, constructed originally during the era of uh, former president William V. S. Topman. And uh, this is a multi-million dollar building. And the, the government is trying to reconstruct this building to ensure that the home of the president, the official office of the president is at the executive mansion. And so we're driving slowly, we're driving slowly down. Uh, from the executive mansion, we will head strictly towards the foreign affairs uh, area. We're using the mean route, the mean Topman Boulevard route, going strictly toward the Pinesville area. And before reaching Pinesville, we're going to make a couple of stops at various polling places uh, across uh, Monrovia, especially the Sinkor Belt. We're going to make several stops. As you can see, the streets are very calm. Uh, there are not a lot of people out in the streets owing to today's uh, voting day. A lot of individuals prefer to just leave their homes, go and vote, and after voting, return home. And it's been a long weekend. Uh, it's been a very long weekend. The holiday, it's been a very long weekend. The holiday also uh, had us you know home yesterday which was uh, uh, Christmas Day a lot of individuals a lot of individuals uh, you know celebrated Christmas with such calmness and this is quite important as Liberians go to the polls today to decide between Joseph Newman Buaka of the Unity Party and George Manawea the former uh, world best European best uh, and African best uh, of the coalition for democratic change and uh, just just a brief background of uh, where we've come from uh, originally there were 20 uh, there were 20 candidates there were 20 candidates uh, that contested for this 2017 election and like you know Liberia practices uh, absolute democracy and none of the 20 candidates could secure an absolute majority of 50 plus 1 percent therefore they had to go for a runoff election 
they had to go for a runoff election. Earlier, the runoff was scheduled for November 7th, um, as determined by the National Elections Commission. But one of the parties uh, which participated in the election, the Liberty Party of Councillor Charles Walker Bromskin, uh, alleged that there were several issues of uh, electoral Ill irregularities and electoral fraud. So the Supreme Court was the next destination. And of course, in the December 7, 2017 landmark decision, the Supreme Court uh, opined that there were not sufficient evidence to prove fraud and sufficient evidence to prove irregularities across uh, the, the country. And thus, it mandated the National Elections Commission to conduct a runoff election within the shortest possible time. Thus, the 26th of December was selected by the National Elections Commission in conf conformation with the laws and its... Uh, legal r regulations and guidelines and so we just passed the uh, national headquarters of the national elections commission in Sinko, nine street uh, we've just passed the election house as is all officially called the elections house uh, that's the official headquarters of the national elections commission uh, there at nine street and we're slowly driving across uh, the principal streets of uh, monrovia and uh, Monrovia has taken a ship after 14 years of deadly civil crisis and uh, you can see the center for national documentation records and archive there's the building uh, this is where all of our uh, documents are kept uh, the deeds the wills the marriage certificates and all those archival documents are kept there and that's the the headquarters of the Center for National Documentation Records and Archives. And now we are at the famous Lutrin, the St. Peter's Lutrin Church. And this area is reminiscent of what occurred, uh, fellow Liberians, if you can remember, in the infamous Lutrin Massacre. The infamous Lutrin Massacre occurred right at the grounds of this building. And uh, there's the St. Peter Lutrin High School, and the church is just right at Jason 8. And we've brought our cameras to bring you information and how voting process uh, is being carried out here at the St. Peter Lutrin.
reasons why a lot of people have not turned up. But any uh, parting comments before we take leave of you? Well, I just want to encourage voters that are out there and have voter cards that I that's supposed to be voting here. I want to encourage them to come and vote because I don't want them to sit there and they can't make the decision and others are making decisions for them. They will not have voice. So I want them to come all and vote. What's your name again? I'm Sienna. Uh, thank you very much for being patriotic and she's serving her, her country as a ballot box controller ensuring that the ballot boxes are properly monitored and uh, also ensuring that uh, voting is done properly and so like you can see the library national police they are doing extremely wonderful early on this morning we spoke to the inspector general of police coroner Gregory Coleman and just as he said every polling place every precinct is gonna have at least two police officer uh, to man the place so let's let's speak with uh, let's speak with one of our officers and good afternoon ma'am good afternoon I'm so happy that you're here to serve your country and um, what has been your observation in terms of the number of persons who uh, come to vote their orderliness what's what's been your observation so far Oh, they are in order and everything is under control. They are going by the principles that they came to do. What specific challenge or challenges as officers assigned here uh, do you face as you carry on this very, very critical task? Some come with violence, shouting, and they want to fight the people that they want to carry the child behind the station to create a voting paper to then to snap them, which will tell them it cannot happen. They gotta lead the child out, and that's one of the challenges we are facing here with them. And how have, have you been able to uh, reduce? Because I know the anxiety. Everyone want to post that they've you know voted for this candidate or they voted for this other person. How have you been able to minimize uh, individuals with such a, uh, a challenge? We talk to them, and at least they are listening and say that because of us, they are going to take their own time. So things have been going on smooth and fine. What's your name again? My name is Peter Tony and Debbie Blake, okay. the police. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, let me shake your hands with that. Yes, thank you so much for the the service you're rendering. So we'll just go across the, we'll go across the, the area. Okay, this is polling place number one. And uh, let's just move the camera there. That's polling place number one. All right, there's a large room and uh, there are, a lot of uh, election staff, I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can count seven persons, uh, and I'll just go around the table and ask them what specific work do they do. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Okay. This is Hot TV Channel 12 and Hot FM 107.9. Uh, what's your name and what specific work do you do here? My name is T. Roden Jackson, and my work here is to identify the voters add the card and then mark or punch it before I can tell my colleagues to give them the ballot box or the ballot papers to go in and cash their ballots. So you're the first person of contact. Right after you, where does the voter go next? Uh, right after me, the voter go to the BBI to be issued with the ballot papers. Okay. So let's go to the, the BW. BPI. Okay, I'm sure that's okay. The ballot paper issue. Okay, so let's go to the ballot paper issue. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Okay, so you work as the ballot paper, and you can see, you know, the ballot papers. You can see the stub, and he has all his uh, uh, materials all here. You as the ballot paper issuer, what specific work do you do? Well, what I enjoy to do is that I go about. Looking at the card for the, the second time after looking at the card, then I issue the ballot paper, tell the voter how to fold the ballot paper after doing that vote, and then turn it to the BBC for verification before uh, putting it into the ballot box. What, what challenge or challenges have you noticed as individuals come to your table uh, wanting to get the ballot paper as quickly as possible? What challenge or challenges have you noticed? The challenge is there is that they don't want to wait. Actually, when it comes, they just want to get the ballot, but don't want to even let me to show them how to fold it or properly before going to the, to the screen for voting. That is a kind of challenge. But in general, the challenge is that 
There are a lot of voters coming in the hall, bringing their phone, trying to do the photo of their, of their vote. And that is not fine for us right now. In a case where you see somebody coming with a kid, holding the ballot papers, of ticket, and we've been stopping in the process. These are some challenges that we're going through to the time. Okay, what's your name again? Prince Okai, my name. Okay, thank you for talking to us. All right, so from here, I'm sure if I'm not... <laughs> let me... Okay, from here, we go to this lady, and I'm sure she's going to... All right, I think I got stuck somewhere. I think... Can you, can you help us? All right, so good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Okay, so welcome to Hot TV Channel 12. And uh, what's your name and what specific work do you do? My name is Miko Choni, the Inca. Okay, when you say you're the Inca, what specific do you do? When the people finish catching their something, they go behind a paddle box, mm -hmm. then they will come to me and they are in their finger before they go catch their foot. Okay, what specific challenge or challenges have you observed uh, when individuals come to get their fingers inked? No, the process is smooth. I have not faced any challenge. The process is smooth. Okay, thank you for talking to us. All right, so uh, this is the St. Peter's uh, Lutheran High School. It's one of the polling precincts, and it has three polling places. It has three polling places, and we will be rushing from here to go to the next polling center. It's Hot FM 107.9, Hot TV Channel 12, bringing you exclusive uh, coverage of the December 26th runoff election. And uh, we'll just get quickly into our van, and after that, we will proceed to the next area. Ready? I am. 
All right, this is uh, Hot TV Channel 12 and Hot FM 107.9. You can also log on to our Facebook page, uh, www.hotfm107.9.com. That is on Facebook. Go to your Facebook search engine and type hot as in H O T T F M and then leave a space and type 107.9 just to give a taste of this live broadcast and i tell you we are the only ones bringing you the exclusive coverage of uh, the run of elections here in liberia we've left the st peter's lutheran school uh, the st peter's lutheran school has uh, three polling places at that precinct and we're gradually making our way to uh, the next uh, precinct and i've been told by I've been told by the protocol officer here, uh, Mr. Aries there, I've been informed by him that we're going to the Len Miller, the Len Miller School, uh, where one of our one of our team member is going to also cast his vote and it's gonna be interesting. And uh, we will walk him through the process. It's gonna be interesting, we'll walk him through the process as he casts his ballot. And uh, you know journalists the security everybody has a stick in this uh, country we call liberia and all of us we must ensure that we make the right and not just the right but the best decisions to ensure that our country mama liberia becomes the best and the most enviable uh, country across and so we on the streets we on the streets uh, you just saw brief footages uh, from around <laughs> brief footage is from <laughs> kind of, man uh, it's interesting so we're approaching the John F Kennedy Memorial Hospital the John F Kennedy Mem Memorial Hospital which is also uh, home to the Tottenham National Institute of Medical Arts aka TNIMA so in your view there you have uh, the JFK Memorial Hospital compound and we're gradually making our way to the Len Miller High School, which is our next stop. And one of our crew members, one of our crew members, is going to uh, go through the process of voting. Hopefully, I'm I'm to also participate in the voting process uh, in the Pinsville area around the worldwide school. And I hope that the protocol just get adjusted so that I also participate in this uh, uh, national endeavor. Again, we are bringing you full coverage of. Uh, full coverage of uh, run of election in Liberia December 26 is the D day and trust me uh, before this day ends you will start to hear provisional and incremental results from across the country and what we've been witnessing is there has been an easy process all through the country the reason why you're not seeing a very you know jam-packed queue is because the process has been so much easy and a lot of individuals have been guided properly the national elections commission staffers have been properly trained and fully capacitated to ensure that individuals who come to cast the ballot are properly guided through all the the uh, i think between four or five processes before a ballot can be cast and so this is something we want to encourage uh that training is one key Training is one key component in every process. Once you have your people properly trained, once you have uh, your staff are properly trained, the work is going to be less and you'll save time. And I can tell you, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. shop on the dot, 6 p.m. voting is going to be closed all across the country as mandated by the elections law. At exactly 6 p.m., voting is expected to close in Liberia. And after that, the election... The election staffers will be left to do their job as it relates to arranging the ballots and counting the ballot. And so we're here at the Len Miller School. Uh, the Len Miller School uh, from the... which has three or four polling places uh, the individuals the staff out have already uh, 
inform us there are four polling places. And like we we'll always observe at all the polling places, the presence of police officers. And we can see the the pubs there with the DEA, uh, the brother there with the Liberian National Police, and I, I'm also sure the other individual there is also with the police. So this is excellent. This is a, a very good um, initiative. And we've been ushered through. We are from Hot FM 107.9. Alright, so we're at the gate. We're at the gate making sure that our identities are checked and we're processed because the election process is very critical and key. And uh, this is the first person of contact, and uh, he is uh, Mr. Siafa Masali. And he's trying to ensure that uh, things, things are done here properly. And one uh, voter is being uh, queried by him as regards to. Uh, the voting card and like we said because of the training that these individuals have received because of the efficiency that they they have been uh, taught the process is very easy just by looking at your voting card he's able to tell you which polling place you're assigned to just by looking at the numbers and they're doing excellent work here the voters are just being queued in and uh, gradually will enter inside all right, so this is the huge structure, Len Miller uh, Junior and Senior High School. Like we said, it is uh, owned by the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army is uh, one of those uh, privately owned church-based institutions that operate schools, uh, churches all across the world, and is one of the, the education-providing institutions in this country. And we just passed the, the first person of contact. Uh, I saw PQC. <laughs> I, I don't know what that PQC. What does it stand for? Precinct Q controller, and he is the precinct Q controller. The precinct is the entire structure, the entire building, and within the precinct there are several polling places. So his responsibility is to ensure that voters that come to cast their vote, they are properly sent to the polling place that is identified by the number on their voting card. So they're doing an extremely uh, wonderful job. Just by looking at your voting ID card, they can tell you that, hey, you're assigned to polling place number one, you're assigned to polling place number three. And so here at the, here at the uh, Len Miller High School, we have four polling places. Yes, we have four polling places. And we just pass through the the precinct Q controller. I don't know whether we have sufficient <laughs> whether we have sufficient cable to go through. Let's go through it. <clears throat> Let's go through it and see how uh, things. At least we can take. Uh, I think we can take this voter. Can we speak to you? Okay, she didn't vote. All right, she didn't vote. Let's see whether we can get uh, some individuals. Okay, I think we have. Uh, so we're gradually entering the Len Miller Junior and Senior High School. <clears throat> it's uh, one of the polling centers in the country. It has four polling places. And we will just speak to these individuals who are standing here. I'm sure they are political party agents. Uh, can you please come to our camera? And also you can you also come to our camera. Oh, both of you represent the same party. Okay, uh, just come close. Uh, welcome to Hot TV. Thank you. Okay, what's your name and which institution do you represent? Uh, I'm Joshua Colley and I'm a pool observer for the CDC, Coalition for Democratic Change. Okay, you, you've been here since 8 a.m. this morning observing voters as they enter to cast their ballot. What major challenge or challenges have you observed during the process? Well, I've been here since 4 o'clock this morning. and pool open Since 4 a.m.? Since 4 a.m. I've been here this morning. That's incredible. And pool open by uh, 8 a.m. And it was encouraging when pool open. There were many inflow of people within the center. But the challenge we're having now is like um, many people are not pulling in for them to vote. We don't know what's the problem, whether it's the Christmas or the the the, 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 the momentum had died down or what, but people are not pulling in as we wish. A lot of individuals have uh, referenced the fact that second round or run of elections uh, do not attract a lot of supporters. Uh, do you see similar thing happening here at this center? Uh, no. As far as I'm concerned, everywhere we've got to report the same thing. But I don't want to believe it's because it's second round. 
And even when the next chairman were announcing the date, he even said it was not a favorable day, but we have to accept it because it was a time. So I want to believe many people, because of the Christmas, Christmas fever. But anyway, like the room I'm in, uh, as a pool washer, I've counted up to 300 plus persons have voted. In the first round, the total vote. But you're outside, so. Uh, yeah, we are two. Okay. And like when you leave, another person take your post. So you're working shifts? Yeah, yeah, my shift, yeah, working my shift. And you are working efficiently? Oh, efficiently, efficiently. And, and we will be vigilant in this election mm. and we make sure that what we want to take place. Okay, thank you very much. And I can also see another member of your party as a party, you know, a representative. Okay, so let's. Um, okay, okay. So let's take uh, this voter. Let's take this voter. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir, and welcome to Hot TV Channel 12. Good afternoon. You've just uh, gone through the process, uh, you know, referenced by the ink on your, your finger. How was it? You went, I mean, so quick and you're back in lightning speed. Yeah, this just showed the librarians that uh, the process is fair and it's transparent and uh, we should all rely on the NEC for a good election result. And uh, can you just give us, because we could not follow you all through your process, uh, how many stages did you follow before uh, getting your ID card and your finger, everything marked? Uh, the first thing when I got out of the uh, entry, what they told me was that uh, I have to give my photo registration card and then they identify my number on the ward, on the FRR. Okay. Uh, from there, they give my uh, ID to another officer that was checking whether my name is on the final rule, mm -hmm. and which of course she did, and she uh, had to punch up my card. Mm -hmm. After then, I was go. She, I was sent to uh, the uh, another officer where in uh, she have to give me the ballot paper stamped, and then uh, I go behind the uh, the uh, secret room, and then I cast my vote. From there, I go to another officer where in they have to mark my my finger with a blue ink, and then I cast my vote and be sent out. Thank you very much. And uh, from your own judgment, is this process fair and free? Very, very much, 100% free, fair, and transparent. What's your name again before we take leave of you? Oh, uh, I'm Nick Seabed, Allies, nice librarian boy. Okay, thank you very much. He's Nick Seabed, and let's talk to uh, this worker of the National Elections Commission. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, how are you, sir? Okay, um, what's your name, and tell us specifically what do you do for the National Elections Commission at this center? Yeah, by the way of introduction, my name is Opon Flomo a senior student at the Universal Library. And I'm a pudding staff here. I'm a prison queue controller. Okay, uh, wh wh what does that involve as prison queue controller? Oh, as prison queue controller, once the voter comes in, he or she identifies herself that she register here. And then by the time I hold her voter's car, I will look at it and then immediately I will know where he or she is going, whether I put him room one or room two. Then I can direct. How, how are you able to to identify that? Because I was standing at the door and as soon as the, the person showed their voter card and then you said, this is pulling place number three. Do you have special training for that? Yes, we are. I, mean, we, I, I told you earlier, I'm a senior student at the Universal Library okay. and I attended a workshop. Okay. So we are all educated people. We're not just people from the Sawa. So there's something on the identification number that can yeah, tell you, yeah. okay? We have series of, you know, they have range, very range. From this number to this number, the person goes directly room one or room two. So let's give an example. What number range do you look at that should be assigned to like room one, two or three? Oh, like, all right, I have a copy or something. Like okay, this. that that's going to be helpful. All right, you see them? Okay. Like you see 7201. Mm -hmm. 20117. Okay. There's a range from here. Mm -hmm. You see 72, mm -hmm. 01. Mm -hmm. You got 720125077. Mm -hmm. Okay. So definitely mm -hmm. by the time I look here, the number that fall within this area, okay. I will know where the pudding, where the voters is going, whether pudding room one or room two. Okay. So even if maybe you are not opportune to attend the workshop, by looking at this, you will know where directly that person should go. What are some of the challenge or challenges that you have observed as a polling or prison queue controller? Mm, some of the challenges we have had today, maybe it's just about low number. People are not really turning in number to vote because as the past election, like November 10, mm -hmm. like I was also there, like, right. not, October 10, right? Yes, October 10 was not an easy task for me out there. Mm -hmm. We had a huge number of crowd fighting in. And the land was almost going to the same barbecue. 
But by this morning, we started around about 10 o'clock. The queue was just like from the entrance there to the main road. And people been coming in. You know, the project is very efficient, but there's a low tender today. Okay, finally, uh, what message do we have for Liberians before we take leave of you? Oh, I just want to encourage each and every Liberian out there to turn out in numbers and vote. Because, mind you, the decision you make today, it is not about you, but it is about Liberia and the unborn generation to come. The decision you make today, your child or children will hold you responsible. Thank you so much for talking with us. And uh, he's one of the precinct Q controller here at the Len Miller Junior and Senior High School, a uh, precinct that has four polling centers. And we've just been uh, taking drive off uh, through several polling areas across the country, ensuring that we bring you up to date uh, information on how Liberia decides between uh, the CDC of Ambassador George Manewere and the unity party of the Vice President Joseph Newman Boyka. And we're gradually leaving the, uh, the Len Miller Junior and Senior High School, which is a, a precinct that has four polling places. And we're driving, we're driving toward the, the Painesville area. And I'm sure we're going to make a couple of stops along the way to see how the process is, uh, is being carried out to also get the views of voters and get the views of our election staff. And one of the things uh, that they've raised is because of the order that they've instituted at the various queue, it has made it very easy for voters to cast your vote in relative short period of time. And so when we passed, we saw two precinct queue controller. Now the precinct queue controller are individuals that you come into contact with first. Before you enter the precinct, these are the individuals you come into contact with very firstly. So they are the ones that, that are going to ask you for your ID card. When you show your ID card, uh, your voter's registration ID card, they're going to look at it and tell you, say, uh, because your number falls between this range and that range, you're supposed to go to this polling place or that polling place. And afterward, you can be guided to the specific area where you're supposed to cast your ballot. And so there's a wonderful process and uh, hats off to the Elections Commission for ensuring that the capacity of its members and its staff are boosted. And we enter in our van. You can see all of the crew members, the, they're also here, uh, ensuring that this broadcast is given live coverage uh, across the country. And so uh, we catch you right after this as we drive through uh, the streets of Central Monrovia, bringing you up to date. Up to date. <clears throat> This is uh, Hot FM 107.9 and Hat TV Channel 12 bringing you exclusive coverage of Elections Day in Liberia. Actually, the runoff elections in Liberia, 26th of December AD 2017. Liberia decides between two uh, parties that made it off to the second round of elections. Originally, we had 20, uh, 20 uh, candidates participating in the elections on October 10. And Liberians voted two top political parties to go for a runoff. And according to our constitution, if no political party can amass uh, 50 plus 1% of the total uh, valid vote cast, 
then that automatically sends us to a runoff election. And so by default, the two parties that got the most votes, the CDC of uh, Ambassador George Manewea and the Unity Party of Vice President Joseph Newman Boakai automatically qualified for the runoff election. And so today, Liberia decides Liberia decides between George Manewea of the CDC and Joseph Newman Boakai of the Unity Party. And we're driving through the streets of uh, Monrovia. We just made some stops at the Len Miller High School that has four polling places. And uh, we around the fish market, around the residence of Liberia's president and Africa's firstly, uh, first democratically elected female president, Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. And we gradually moving toward the Congo town area toward the Conga Town area uh, and uh, there are a couple of polling precincts around there and uh, based on our protocols that we have maybe you might be able to stop at one or two areas before reaching uh, central Painesville. It's quite important to inform you about uh, processes here is eight minutes past four o'clock uh, less than one hour let me do my my estimation less than one hour 52 minutes before polling can close and we've just passed the the cdc party headquarters uh in your view we've just passed the cdc party headquarters in in congo town and we're gradually making our way uh toward the painsville area and like i said we have less than one hour 52 minutes before polling can close across the country by law polling should open the polls should open at 8 a.m and close by 6 p.m that's by law unless there are some irregularities that would necessitate the late opening or the late closure of polls but by law polls should open by 8 a.m and close by 6 p.m so this is how liberia this is how monrovia looks like and we're around the congo town area uh, this is the mammoth structure of the Dominion Christian Fellowship Center around the Catholic Junction uh, where Bishop Isaac Winker presides as resident bishop. And uh, the Liberty Party headquarters is just on the left hand side of uh, the Catholic Junction area. And this is the University of Liberia, uh, A.M. Dogliotti College of Medicine, and also the School of Pharmacy, where Liberian doctors and Liberia pharmacologists are uh, trained, uh, where the doctors go through a rigorous five-year uh, program uh, to ensure that they become uh, to ensure that they become uh, certified uh, medical doctors. And so we're driving through. Uh, the principal streets of uh, Monrovia. We're around the Congatan area, and uh, this is the Kailondo petrol station. And uh, Mr. Kailondo is actually attorney at law, George Kailondo, one of Liberia's uh, influential political uh, personalities. Uh, he has a law firm, he has several business interests and uh yes uh, okay in picture is the nigerian embassy the nigerian embassy accredited near monrovia this is uh the nigerian embassy uh, a huge structure a huge structure there and uh, vehicular traffic is is rather slowed owing to uh the self-imposed holiday because of the election there are not many vehicles on the streets and we can understand it's because of the it's because of the election. Once you have election, a lot of people, after casting their ballot, they decide to either return home or maybe go sit to somewhere and ease up the tension, uh, you know, ease up the stress, the stress of election. And this is the Zone 3 Police Depot. The Zone 3 Police Depot. We just passed the Zone 3 Police Depot. And uh, we're around the Congo Town area, gradually uh, easing our way through the streets of Monrovia. Uh, Liberia decides between Joseph Yuma Boakai of the Unity Party and George Manewea of the CDC. And we will just give you a couple of uh, statistics in time between time to to inform you uh, the total number of registered voters across the counties, the 15 political subdivision, 
we just want to give you uh, the 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 value. So in Sino County, there are forty-seven thousand eight hundred and ninety-one persons that registered in Sino County, and so we expect. And there are some districts actually. There are some district in in uh, in Montreal here that have more register of voter than some counties. And so, for example, Bomi has 61,022 register of voters. 61,022 register of voters. Central Liberia, Bonn County has 208,123 register of voters. For Bapulu, Bapulu has 48,650 register of voters. And in Grand Bassa County, there are 145,523 registered voters. In Grand Cape Man County, there are 66,389 registered voters. In Grand Jeddah County, in the far southeast there, there are 63,202 registered voters. And still in the southeast, in Grand Cru, I think Grand Cru has one of the least uh, registered voters. 35,531 registered voters and uh, Lofa County has 167,427 registered voters and Maagibi County has 154,104 registered voters Maryland in the far east there has uh, 57,140 voters and the giant size Montserrat County has 778,291 registered voters, followed by Nimba County with 279,601. River G also registering 35,191 registered voters. River Sess County registering 35,540 persons. And Sino County registering 47,891 persons. And so, uh, fellow Liberians, just an overview of uh, the number of registered voters uh, per county so that you have an understanding of how the over 2 million uh, persons that uh, did register in Liberia, how they are equally distributed. Uh, not just not equally distributed how they are distributed across uh, the country and there are two million one hundred and eighty three thousand six hundred and twenty nine registered voters I repeat two million one hundred eighty three thousand six hundred and twenty nine registered voter all across two thousand eighty precincts and when we talk about precincts those are the buildings whether it's a school or a church and there are 5,390 polling places, the different different rooms that have been assigned at those uh, polling precincts for voters to easily cast their vote. And it's election day in Liberia, the 26th of December, Liberia decides. Liberia decides between George Weah of the CDC and uh, Ambassador Joseph Newman Boakai of the Unity Party. And we in Pinsville. We can safely say we're in Pinsville now, uh, gradually cruising, cruising across the shores of Congo Town, and uh, we will make quick stop. We'll make quick stop to the Pinsville Seven Day Adventist School, uh, which is the Pinsville SDI School. We'll make quick stop. We'll make quick stop at the Pinsville SDI School, one of the schools in District Electoral District Number Six, Montserrat County. That recorded uh, high voters uh, during the first round of election, and this is the LBDI building, uh, a recently constructed LBDI. Is it LBDI or IB? Okay, is the IB Bank? Sorry, that's the recently constructed IB Bank, International Bank of Liberia, one of the recently constructed uh, structures, giving Pinsville, giving Pinsville a very nice look and. Uh, a very beautiful face lift and as you can see fellow Liberians is election day uh, a lot of individuals are not in the street uh, one can clearly guess that uh, many Liberians have already cast their vote and they've gone home uh, to relax 
and prepare for another day of work tomorrow. Mind you, tomorrow is work. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Uh, is work across the country for those who can afford. For those who can afford work, they're going to be going to work. For those who cannot afford, for those who fall under the unemployment uh, banner, uh, those 85% of our population who fall under the unemployment banner, they'll just be there, you know, in showing that uh, one way or the other, they find a way to live. And so we're right here at the Painesville Seventh-day Adventist School. It's one of the voting precincts, and we're driving there to see how the voting process has been carried out there. And quickly, we'll have to change the microphone setup to ensure that we bring you exclusive coverage of voting activities here at the Painesville Seventh-day Adventist School. And uh, kind courtesy goes to us, Hard TV, the one media, one media incorporated, ensuring that we bring you uh, up to speed uh, election day, uh, ensuring that we bring you up to speed with uh, uh, election day activities here in Liberia. And this is the Painesville Seventh Day Adventist School campus, and I think is uh, this building is under construction from the look of things, and. Uh, Alright, so this is our crew. Uh, you know, they, they're having a wonderful time as we cruise through the principal street. So this is Hot FM 107.9, the official voice of One Media Incorporated and Hot TV Channel 12. And we're bringing you exclusive coverage of Liberia uh, deciding his fate at the ballot box. And so we will just enter. We we'll just uh, make our way through. This is uh, the Pinsville Seventh Day Adventist School. is one of the polling uh, precincts across the country. One of the over 5,390 uh, polling places across Liberia. And this is the first uh, election staff that we will be talking uh, to. Good afternoon, sir. You look tired. Yeah, just look at the camera. Oh, I'm afraid. Can you please go in there and talk about it? Okay, you're afraid to talk to me. Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> all right. We just talk to the next. We just talk to the next lady. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. All right, you are live on Hot TV Channel 12, and we bringing exclusive coverage of uh, the process of voting all across Liberia. And we just want to ask you, what's your name and what specific work do you do here at uh, this particular polling precinct? Um. I'm actually my actually my name is Esther Bena. I'm here telling people the rooms that they are supposed to go to vote. Okay. So you, what's the tag? I know you get specific election name, then like PPs. Yeah, well, I'm, ju I'm just uh, that you know to direct the people in the rooms that they have to the PPC to go in the room to vote. Okay. So I guess you are the PQC. That's the Precinct Q Controller, right? Okay, so as you direct individuals to go to specific polling places, what challenges have you observed as you exercise this uh, very cru crucial role? Um, actually, I think for today is it's not bad. It's okay because people are not really pulling in like you know the first election, the first time, and then some people come here they don't even know you know. The, how they call it, the numbers on the ID, you have to tell them where to go. So they are, they, those are some of the challenges. You have to tell them where to go. Okay, so let's get this. Uh, thank you for talking with us. Let's get this next uh, gentleman. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. I see you guys are really tired. So good. Okay. Uh, tell us your name and what specific uh, responsibility do you have as a polling staff? Well, I'm Mamou Sony. Uh, at the center of Pinsville, mm -hmm. Central Academy, and then I uh, serve as 
PQC, okay, which is uh, directing people where to go vote. Okay. Know your viewer rooms. Yeah. And I see you are two here to ensure that if one person has any reason to go out to maybe observe nature, you will substitute for that person, right? Uh, thank you for doing a wonderful job, and we pray that you stay up, up to all the votes that count. All right, so this is um, another uh, observer, right? All right, let's talk to her quickly. Good afternoon, madam. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, what's your name and what specific job do you do here? I'm Grace Nomo. I'm an observer for the Liberal Girls Guide Association. The Liberal Girls Guide Association. Okay, so since you've been here, uh, what have you observed with regards to how the process is uh, ongoing? Well, the process is moving smoothly. Everybody, at least they are asking questions, we're directing them, the old people will help them to be able to carry them and bring them back. Those are disabled also, I'm here to help them. So your organization is giving additional support to the National Elections Commission to ensure that we have a smooth uh, operation of the election? Yeah, exactly so. Okay, thank you so much for helping Liberia to succeed. All right, so this is how it is at the Painesville Seventh-day Adventist School. This is one of the polling uh, precincts in Liberia, uh, specifically in Monrovia, and we're having a wonderful time as we cruise across the principal streets of Monrovia. And earlier this morning, we went to uh, the Bujro Island area. We visited Clarata uh, and all of those areas across the bridge. And uh, yeah, this is one of the polling place number. This is polling place number eight. And you can see the, the number of individuals, actually the, on the voter registration ID card, these numbers re represent the bracket of individuals that are supposed to go to polling place number eight. So if your number fall in between this bracket, you are allowed to go to polling place number eight. But let's go through and see whether we can... Uh, all uh, right, let's see. All right, let's see whether we can let's see whether we can go across. Yes. So this is Hot TV Channel 12 bringing you exclusive coverage of Liberia run of election. And I'm sure we have sufficient okay, wiring to um, This is one of the polling center. This is polling place number 1. Uh, this is polling place number 1 and we will just uh, go across the room and I think there are several party agents and party observers and they let me see I can make a hair count one two three four I think there are four four individuals that I sign as pulling uh, agents all right we no we're not recording we are with a media institution and we're accredited to cover this program or vote no we're not voting people we're not recording people voting we're recording the process say that again camera is not allowed in the polling place camera is not allowed in the polling place okay according to your regulation according to what all right, so we've been told by one of the, the polling workers that according to the electoral law, cameras are not allowed in polling places. And I think that's very strange because even across the, I mean, across the world, cameras are carried everywhere. Uh, voting is a public event. It's not, uh, you know, voting is not a private, concealed event. It's a public event. And so I think he's been misinformed by what cameras and, uh, you know. But anyway, this is Hot FM 107.9 and Hot TV Channel 12 on the minute bringing you uh, event as it unfold in Liberia. Today is Liberia's decision day. Liberia decides between two parties that made it to the runoff. Two political parties that have been so much uh, operational with regards to the body politics of Liberia. And we'll just uh, leave this uh, voting precinct and try to go across uh, Painesville, Painesville, as you may be aware, is the largest uh, city in Liberia. Painesville is the largest city in Liberia, so you expect a whole lot of polling precincts across Painesville. 
and we will ensure that we bring you a lot more uh, precincts and we'll also be able to talk to uh, many uh, election staff as well as individuals who have participated in the voting. So stick and stay, stay tuned as we go through uh, several polling precincts across uh, Painesville City. Okay, so we are making our way out of the Painesville Seven Day Adventist School, and uh, uh, thank you very much for giving us coverage. Okay, so we're making our way out of the Painesville Seven Day Adventist uh, School is uh, one of the polling precincts. And this is Hot FM 107.9, Hot TV, Channel 12, bringing you exclusive coverage of our runoff election. And we will just be back right after this brief switch as we get into our van. Hot FM 107.9, Hot TV, Channel 12, uh, bringing you exclusive coverage of uh, runoff uh, election in Liberia. And uh, we just passed the Pinsville Seven Day Adventist uh, Precinct, uh, which has a little over eight polling places. And it is 1630 GMT, uh, gradually edging towards 6 o'clock. And by law, at 6 p.m., Polls across the country are expected to close by law. And so gradually as we approach the 6.30 period benchmark, Liberians across the country are casting their ballot for the candidate of their choice. And what we observe at all of the polling places that we visited is there is a sense of order. Individuals are voting in a very quick fashion. 
as opposed to uh, previous, uh, the first round of election. And we'll just share this brief thought before we get back to the description of uh, where we're going. Uh, Oliver, you covered uh, much of the much of the morning segment when we were at uh, Bush Road Island, uh, Clara Town, Jamaica, and all of those areas. Uh, it's also similar to what we've seen here in the Pinsville area. What's your take? I think uh, like what, what we've been saying all through uh, the morning hours during the presentation of the shore, the Asia Melt, uh, is what we see happening at the different uh, precinct we visited. Uh, uh, during the course of the first round, we're going to those of you watching us across the world. Uh, we've realized that as a result of uh, some of the the issues that occurred during the first round, with reference with with with, with special uh, reference and emphasis on the voter registration, where we notice a lot of folks registering to places where they are not residing. Many they were being trucked. I mean, we're not going to hide it. We're going to be very frantic about that. They were being trucked from one place to the other. So at about now, the the representative candidates and all the lawmakers who were in the business of trucking voters aren't prepared now to have those individuals who they truck transported back to the places where they were trucked. So as a result, you notice all of the places we visited this morning, we have had low turnout. Uh, this is one major factor. Uh, affecting the uh, the the conduct of the process so far, uh, the low turn up, and secondly, this voting day, the run of day, is right after. It's right after uh, Christmas, and after Christmas, you know there are folks who will suffer some fatigue as a result of uh, their social habits uh, being uh, observed during the, the celebration of the Christmas. So you're going to have a lot more. But on the overall, uh, it's been rep uh, reported so far by all of the pooling uh, workers, including political party observers, the security uh, officers we've, we've been able to speak to, all of them told us that everything is so is, is okay so far. And so we're still watching to see where we'll get, we'll get any contrary uh, story. But on the overall, on the average, it's been a pretty a good day you know as it relates to the voting processes all right that was kind oliver kind uh my colleague there from the hot morning life and uh we around the elw rehab area there is the lamp mission academy which is a voting precinct and uh the cameras uh, just passed there when yeah we'll just go strictly toward the king gray area we will go toward the king gray so uh those of you who are streaming live on our facebook portal uh, we are on the rehab uh, road. We are on the rehab road, and uh, you've been showed the picturesque view of uh, the King Gray community, which is on our far right. Uh, this is an underprivileged community that have been. Um, uh, this is district number six in Montserrado County, and this is the King Gray community, a community that is so underprivileged and. Uh, uh, we okay. You can see the King Grid Town Hall. That's the King Grid Town Hall. Uh, one of the, and they actually call call it a town hall. All right. The King Grid used to be one of those old towns back uh, back during the days. And I can vouch that it's been one of the oldest town around here, even before the rehab community and Studio Junction community, and all of the communities around. So gradually, we are approaching the rehab junction. Uh, on our left is the famous Monrovia Bible College, uh, is a theological institution. Uh, you also have the Carver Mission School, the Carver Mission School, and the newly uh, constructed Carver Mission Clinic, which is a privately owned uh, clinic owned by the Carver Mission uh, family there. And what you're seeing is a huge fence. Uh, that's protecting the ELWA, uh, the ELWA uh, community, and this used to be one of the biggest uh, ER uh, ETU. Did I say ER? This used to be one of the biggest uh, Ebola treatment unit, and this is the Eternal Love Winning Africa, the Eternal Love Winning Africa fence, uh, also known as ELWA, the Internal Love Winning Africa fence. This entire 
a plot of land uh, that you can see uh, own, uh, is owned by the Internal Law of Winning Africa. It's a charity, a missionary charity. Uh, they have a radio station. They have a mini clinic. They have, uh, you know, the beach course. And it's a wonderful place. And 2014, 2015, when Ebola ravaged our country, uh, the one of the biggest ETU, that's the Ebola treatment unit, was here and uh, this area used to be uh, quite a scene of attraction this is the ELWA market a, a, a partial view of the ELWA market an area that has so much commerce and trade activity uh, during a normal day but you can expect today's election day so a lot of the marketeers have abandoned uh, commerce and decided to put country first and indeed we want to uh, say congratulations to all of you patriotic Liberians who've made it your duty to go out there and vote for Liberia indeed we want to vote our country first because you are a Liberian first before you are a partisan to any political party so in whatever we do whatever decision we make always want to remember that we are Liberians first before we are members of any political party so gradually uh, we're cruising through the the ELW uh, community on our left is the district number six uh, unity party office which previously was occupied by uh, honorable Edwin Melvin Snow and uh, honorable Edwin Melvin Snow is the current representative elect of uh, Birmingham County Senja district uh, he moved to the Senja district area got elected by the people of Senja so he no longer is within Montserrat County district number six rather he has moved to Senja district in Birmingham County and so this is Panama Lodge the soundboard of Panama Lodge deep within the ELW uh, community and uh, for Liberians ELW is famous is famous for several beaches so you see the Cooper's Beach soundboard uh, if you pass the Cooper's Beach if you drive further down you go to the Tropicana Beach you go to Suya Beach you go to Liberia Beach and all the different beaches across the shorelines and I tell you Liberia is one of the the few countries in the world that is blessed with a superb coastline and we have several kilometers thousands of thousands of kilometers of coastline and the tourism sector is going to be a very vibrant sector if attention and funding is given to uh, the tourism sector in our country and we gradually approaching the total gas station the rehab drive total gas station and total is uh, is a French is a French uh, company total is a French company that trades in petroleum and petroleum product is one of the largest uh, distributors of petroleum and petroleum product in Liberia uh, this is the ELWA rehab drive turning point and we're gradually we're gradually making a left branch or left turn and going toward the vice president's house we're making a left turn going toward the vice president's house and uh, because of protocols, we couldn't go toward the Kendija Public School where uh, the candidate for the CDC, uh, Mr. George Ware, voted. Uh, uh, Mr. George Ware, as a matter of fact, registered and voted at the Kendija Public School uh, because of the protocols, because of the tight protocols, we will not be able to go to the Kendija Public School. But rather, we're going to take a deep thrust in the... Uh, a deep thrust in the GSA rule and some uh, communities are just in the GSA rule area but we'll bring you a full description of the areas that we will go we will pass by and let us see uh, hats up to all of you all of you the over 300 persons that are following us live through our Facebook feed and it's quite interesting today is election day in Liberia and uh, we want to encourage those of you who are on Facebook. You can always go to uh, your search engine and type HOT as in H-O-T-T-F-M 107.9. And HOT FM 107.9, you can go there and you can access all of our videos and all of our coverage as we bring you exquisite and exclusive uh, coverage of events in Liberia. Today is election day, 26th of December. And we have few 
few meters away from the house of the vice president of the Republic of Liberia. He lives in uh, a very a humble and a very a very decent structure uh, in the rehab community. The vice president has been living here as a matter of record for the past 12 years. The vice president and his family have been living here <clears throat> for the past 12 years he and his family is a very humble and uh, very decent structure and from our vehicle we can even see in the fence it's a white painted uh, fence that has several uh, security officers obviously uh, several security officers manning the the compound of the second highest political elected <laughs> individual in our country the vice president and uh, we're making a live turn uh, we're making a left turn from the vice president's junction uh, trying to make a deep thrust toward the Dupont Road area and this is an interesting journey and one of the one of the polling officers uh, at the Pinesville seven day Adventist high school uh, actually said cameras cannot be allowed at the voting centers and i was like are you kidding me uh doesn't he know that the press the press is free to carry out coverage of election matters and as a matter of fact election business is everybody business and election matter is a public event is not one concealed you know uh privately held event it's something that everybody is interested in. Everybody wants to see what's happening at the different polling precincts and at the different polling centers across the country. 5,390 polling places, 2,080 polling precincts, 2,183,000 plus registered voters across the country. Liberia makes a decision between uh, incumbent senator of Montserrat County, George Manewea, ex-footballer, and also vice president of the Republic of Liberia, Joseph Newman Buakai, two astute, incredible statesmen uh, representing their political parties here uh, during the run of election. And just a brief information, we're approaching the GSA road the intersection between the rehab drive and the GSA road is is a one lane paved stretch uh, funded by the World Bank of uh, the World Bank, and this road constructed with funds from the World Bank. The rehab GSA road is a paved one lane stretch and uh, the community is a thriving community a thriving community and Liberians uh, all across the country either they've cast their vote or if they are ineligible to cast a vote either they are minors or they are aliens they're just sitting home uh, observing the day uh, treating it as a holiday and ensuring that everything goes on smoothly and uh, some sports lovers sports enthusiasts are taking time off to watch uh, European matches and we'll then be able to understand that a um, couple of uh, European teams are playing uh, but the big news is Liberia decides today Liberia decides today in a runoff election between the unity party uh, which actually came second with a little over 28 percent of the total vote cast during the first round of election and the CDC of George Ware that came first in the first round of election with a little over 38.9 percent of uh, total valid vote cast and we're branching uh, toward the famous Alpha Old Timer sports pitch that was renamed the Willis Knuckles sport pitch uh, in memory of uh, in memory of falling statesman Willis Knuckles who died I must say uh, he died uh, of natural causes he died of natural causes uh, I think in Ghana all right uh, we we're going straight we're going straight our protocol demands that we go straight toward the Dupuru area 
So this is the signboard of the Alpha Old Timer Sports uh, Association, one of the biggest sports association uh, in the country. And you know, for old timers here, is a regular thing to belong to an association. Uh, and normally in Liberia, most old timers association uh, incorporates individuals from age 35 above. And you know, for some special reason, although I'm not 35 above, but I'm part of uh, an old timers sports association. And uh, from for some special reason, like we said. Uh, once you are not active involved in football and other activities, uh, once you have a gainful employment and you can afford, once you have a wife and you have kids, I think you have some level of responsibility. So you can be called, you know, and considered as an old timer. So, you know, I'm an old timer by description in terms of the work we do and uh, our contribution to the society. But this is the Zuba Town community. Uh, on your far right, this is the this is the Zuba Town community. The Zuba Town community is one of the several communities in Montserrat County District Number Four. As a matter of fact, we are in a very strategic, a very strategic district. District Number Four recorded the highest number of registered voters during the. Uh, voter registration process. Let's just make a brief stop at one of the polling precincts. Okay, this is one of yeah left left turn. Left turn. Uh, this is the Mother Sarah School, the Reverend Mother Sarah School. This is uh, the Reverend Mother Sarah School system. One of the the polling precincts here. Okay, one of the polling precincts, and we'll just ensure that will bring you uh, information from uh, the voting staff, the National Elections Commission staff, and obviously uh, individuals who participated in the voting process. And our vehicle just got stuck by a, a huge, a huge stone. All right, uh, we'll just have a quick swap in the microphone, a quick adjustment, we'll be right back. technical and logistical support as we continuously bring you full coverage of election day so we here we will just briefly speak with uh, this is one of uh, this is one of the community leaders uh, mr. Wilfred P uh, he is also the director for the Monrovia vocation technical training center I know him very well uh, he is one of the community leaders here so we will just briefly try to get in the queue and maybe speak to one of the election staff and find out how how the process of voting is being carried out as you can see it's a very solemn and quiet uh situation uh the queues are very free owing to the efficient uh workings of the staff and like we passed through several areas across the country the staff this time around they've been efficiently uh capacitated so it's made the process very easy. The queues are free. Any any individual coming can just within a couple of five to ten minutes get their ballot cast, and everything is all all done and dusted. So we have uh, individuals who are political party agents. I see an individual representing a political party, and I see on his tag 
All right, I see UP, which stands for Unity Party. So the political parties, okay, the CDC. So the political parties are represented at each. So this is a polling place. A polling place is an area in a precinct. The precinct is the entire structure. The polling place is an area where voters go stand in the queue when cast a ballot. And these are election staff. And they're in a very uh, quiet and pensive mood. Everybody's serious. We've got election business. Now it's more than election business. That's a serious issue. So we'll just take time to talk to the voter's identification officer. I think he's the first person of contact here. Good afternoon, sir. Good day. All right. Uh, you look exhausted. What happened, Ajib? Not even much. Just uh, still waiting for food out here now. Oh, okay. Uh, tell us specifically your name and what exactly do you do here? My name is Chavin Pashu and I'm present Cube Controller. Okay, so what exactly uh, does your work entail? Um, my work has to do with when photo comes in, I identify the number and send them to the land it belongs to. Okay. So do you have any challenges with regards to assigning voters who may not have you know, known the different polling places? No, not yet. Okay. Thank you for speaking to us. All right, so let me go and talk to the individual near the ballot box. This is where uh, Liberia decides uh, between the two candidates for the run of election. So this is the ballot box. As you can see, uh, with four standards, it's a transparent box. And you have this lady. We'll speak to her quickly. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Uh, what is your name and what work exactly do you do here? Matilda Ingo. Say that again? Matilda Bwa Inko. Okay, so she's the Inka. After a person has cast their ballot, you ink the finger, right? What specific challenge uh, have you observed as voters queue in to cast a ballot? Nothing much. So everything is okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so we'll go to the other area. This is uh, one of the polling places. And as you can see, they're having a nice time, and because of their efficiency, uh, they've been able to serve hundreds of individuals who've turned out at this Reverend Mother Zero School System. All right, there are um, okay, there are seven pooling. Yeah, there are seven pooling places here at the Reverend Mother Zero School System. There are ser seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is pulling place number seven. We just left from pulling place number seven. So by the count, there should be eight pulling places. So there should be eight pulling places. So we just left from uh, pulling place number seven at the Reverend Mother Cyril School System. And this school is in the Zuba Town community. Uh, one of the few communities within uh, district number four like i said district number four is a very special district this district recorded the highest number of registered voters as a matter of fact there were 63,290 persons that registered in district number four alone that beats the amount of counties like river says counties like river g counties like bomi so this tells you that the number of persons who registered in district number four is so so large, and there are several polling centers, uh, you know, in precincts like this. So finally, let's go to um, polling place number six, and then talk to a few individuals, and then we leave from uh, the Reverend Mother Sarah area. But before going there. You can cast the camera far across. You see the presence of uh, security officers. The Liberia National Police presence is everywhere, uh, as told by us this morning by Inspector General Gregory Coleman. He informed us that the Liberia National Police is going to be very robust. The Liberia National Police presence is all over the place. And in addition to members of the police force, uh, we also saw individuals from the Drug Enforcement Agency, other areas we saw individuals from the Liberia Immigration Service, other areas we also saw individuals from uh, other uh, state security apparatus. And so the process is going on, you know, in accordance with the regulations, in accordance with the, the structural guidelines. And we'll talk to a couple of uh, electoral staff before leaving. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, how are you? 
Okay, uh, tell us your name and what specifically do you do here? My name is S. William Cray Jr. I'm the presiding officer of a polling place number six. May be mayor. So, uh, what, what are some of your responsibilities? Well, I'm here to supervise my staff. I'm here to record uh, data and present it to my uh, ES, which is the electoral supervisor. Okay, as the presiding officer, the, the man in touch with uh, the voters, I mean, face to face, what specific challenges have you been able to observe as voters queue in to cast a ballot? Yeah, for now, we are like uh, happy because the challenges that we are encountering now is not like before, because majority of the challenges that we encountered before have been worked on. Like, for example, uh, you know, QC be very strong on uh, identification number. To identify the identification number and sending uh, voters to their specific uh, polling station. So majority of the challenges have been continued because of you know some uh, intervention from NEC. So for now we don't have much challenges when it comes to yeah problems in, in the voting process. All right, uh, thank you so much for your service to country. Uh, on the far right are observers from different political parties and some uh, institutions. So we'll take the, the microphone to them to find out from their own independent observations what's been happening. So we have this, Madam. Good afternoon, Madam. Good afternoon. Uh, you are an observer. Tell us your name and which institution you represent. My name is Madam MP. I represent Unity Party. Okay, how early did you come to ensure that things are going on uh, normally? I came here at 6 o'clock this morning. And when did pool open? 8 o'clock. Okay, so you are, you are on touch with the, the issues and events here. Uh, are there any observations with specific reference to any irregularity that you've observed as a representative of a political party? No. I see you have a very, uh, you know, exhaustive and comprehensive record of, uh, is it number of voters or what's here? The yeah, number of voters. Okay. And I see X and I see a correction sign. What does that mean? The yeah, amount of people, if I having to get one person, I'm back. After all, I can't and get my record correct. And you're going to do that in lines with the National Elections Commission staff, right? Yes. Thank you for talking with us. So let's go to this uh, gentleman. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Tell us your name and what institution you represent. I'm J. Emmanuel Malba. I represent the CDC. Okay. Uh, as a party's representative, uh, how early did you come? I came as early as 5, 5 o'clock. And uh, can you describe what did you see when you came? Were there uh, electoral officers deployed? Uh, spe with specific reference, uh, members of the, the state security, were they all around when you came? Yes. I met all of them on ground this morning. Are there any specific observations you have as you've been here since 5 a.m.? Um, there is nothing that I've observed. Except that some some of the voters came and uh, they get a ara ara uh, roster down there. Some of them they never found their pictures okay. on the in the in the booklet. Yeah, yeah, they never found their pictures there. So they check in a F ara ara and they found their number, but they said that they couldn't vote. They, they shouldn't vote if your photo is not found in that uh, voter row. But when your number is found, that you can vote. So how were you people able to reconcile and harmonize that? No, they said it was a mandate from the election commission. I mean, from the Supreme Court. So we just uh, let go, whatever. But if they made mistake on your name, if they made mistake on your name, and we can we can rectify that on the on the voter roll. If they made mistake on your name, you can rectify that on the, on the voter roll and, and we rectify a number. You can you can you can vote. Yeah, but when your picture is not there and your number is there, you won't vote. 
And this is very key uh, because there are a lot of individuals who have their names and they are, <laughs> their photos are not there, but their names are there. Thank you very much for being so uh, attentive at what you do. We'll quickly go to an independent elections uh, coordinating committee. And this is an observer. Sir, tell us your name and what specifically I see you have a huge questionnaire. Uh, that you're filling in so cautiously and uh, just tell us your name and what do you do here? Okay, uh, I'm Henry B. Fingley. I came from the institution called ECC. We are here to observe all election coordinating activities of Liberia. All right, you have a very exhaustive and comprehensive uh, checklist. Uh, what are some of the things you're looking for? Uh, in between FATEC to tell that uh, I am not answerable to the question, but if you want further information, you can please get to the ECC office. You know, they will follow giving information when it comes to these things. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for speaking with us. Uh, all right, that's uh, Atone Law, Oscar Blows Group, the Election Coordinating Committee. They are a partner with the... You have, they are a partner with the National Elections Commission in showing that elections are conducted peaceably, peacefully, and credibly. And we'll drive off from here to the next polling precinct. Uh, the next polling precinct should be somewhere around the, um, around the before reaching the Dupa Road Market, uh, the, the next pre, uh, polling precinct. And so this is district number four, Montserrado County. And like we said, this is a very special district. It recorded the highest number of registered voters. So this district is of interest, and we'll try as much as possible to bring you at least uh, maybe seven to ten uh, polling precincts across district number four. Welcome, Duncan. Hot FM 107.9, Hot TV, Channel 12. We'll catch you when we drive in our van. FM 107.9 and uh, Hot TV Channel 12 bringing you exclusive and live coverage of uh, elections, uh, events here in Liberia. And of course, today is the runoff and between the unity party of uh, Vice President Joseph Nyoman Bwakai and the, the opposition coalition for democratic change of uh, Senator George Manewea. We've just visited the Reverend Mother Sarah School System, uh, which is one of the polling precincts in District Number 4, Montserrado County. Uh, the crew is here, Khan Oliver Khan, Iris there, uh, Joseph Du, uh, and Nick, and uh, Mr. James uh, F. Colley, and then uh, Eugene Jones. All of us were here ensuring that we have full exclusive coverage of uh, all of the events across uh, the various polling uh, precincts and the polling places across uh, Monrovia and parts adjacent. And so we will be taking a left, uh, a left turn. We'll be taking a left turn. Uh, we'll be taking a left turn to go toward the Dupo Road area and Dupo Road is a densely populated uh, community uh, that has several blocks uh, Dupo Road as a matter of fact has four blocks 
Dubo Road community has four blocks and uh, communities that surround Dubo Road include the Zuba Town community, the Shara community, the Miki Gray community, and uh, the Down Dubo Road Waterside community. So those are communities that surround uh, the Dubo Road uh, community. And now we around the Bishop Kula Junction, and uh, Bishop Kula is Bishop Kula is one of is one of Liberia's uh, famous cleric, uh, and Bishop Atta F. Kula, one of Liberia's famous cleric, who was so instrumental in the peace uh, and reconciliation uh, process of our country and he has a community named in his honor here in liberia the community we just passed is the bishop Ato f kula community and uh we gradually we're gradually uh going around the duperu area and we we've been told that the chief executive officer of the one media incorporated owner of hot tv and hot fm 107.9 uh, mr bernard dj blue benson uh, uh actually registered around the dupoter area and uh, we're going to be capturing live coming out of the voting center but first and foremost uh i will go do my i will go do my voting first and right after that right after that we'll come back Right after that, we'll come back to where the CEO, uh, Mr. Bernard Blue Benson, uh, did his own registration. And so this is the Dubo Road community. Uh, this is, uh, we're approaching the Dubo Road Central Market. We're approaching the Dubo Road Central Market. And uh, Dubo Road is one of those few communities that has uh, mixed uh, mixed population with reference to income status uh, there are some individuals who are very rich and some individuals who are very poor in the Dubai area so it's a mixed income status community and as you can see across the street uh, several individuals who have voted uh, are sitting at uh, different different uh, recreational and entertainment spots and let me be quick to mention that the Dubo Road Market is still open. It's one of the few markets that I've seen still open. It's one of the few markets that I see still open uh, amidst the election fever. And one can clearly say that uh, the market is open. Uh, the market is uh, fully uh, <laughs> active with marketeers trading their goods and their commodities. So we're making a left turn going toward the Dubaro Junction area and it's in an attempt for me to get my, my vote cast. After my vote has been cast, I uh, will make a U-turn to go and get the, the remaining uh, the remaining precincts of the of the Dupo Road and other communities around here. Uh, as a matter of fact, this uh, Dupo Road community uh, register its name in the pages of history of liberia uh sometime around the 80s around the 89 when you have the Dupero massacre a very painful uh reminder of history there where several persons were murdered in cold blood uh, but that was that was then and that is history now That is history now, and and so we have to forge, uh, we have to, we have to forge forward as a country. We have to forge forward as a country, unity as a, as a guiding principle, and let's speed up so that we go get my my vote cast, and then we return to where, uh, the chief executive officer of uh, One Media House Incorporated did register. Let's go, let's go to where I did register, uh at the worldwide school system also known as the william bean uh school system as a matter of fact uh, this community is a sprawling community of uh, business people students and the working class and there are several recreational centers 
and will make a left turn at that JFK Medical Center ES Grand Mental Health Hospital Junction and the at the ES Grand Mental Health Hospital is the the mental health annex of the JFK Memorial Hospital so in simple Liberian English this is uh, the area where they bring the mentally ill people as we can see the crazy people and those people who have mental disorder this is where they bring them for therapy this is where they bring them for treatment we're driving there when we reach there our cameras will focus on the ES Grant mental health facility so that fellow Liberians you can have a view of the ES Grant mental facility the annex of the John F Kennedy uh, Memorial Hospital and uh, we're driving on a very rough dusty road that leads to the worldwide school system the worldwide school system is a religious fit based institution owned and operated by the worldwide assembly it's a fit based uh, institution and we're driving on a very rough road rough and dusted road that is uh, very 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 small and we're competing with motorbikes pedestrians and uh, other vehicles uh, yeah this is now rural Liberia this is uh, and Pinsville city is just outside Monrovia it's just Pinsville city is just few uh, it's just few areas outside the nation's capital as you may be aware Pinsville is the largest straight we are going straight as you may be aware Pinsville city is the largest city in Liberia uh, home to a lot of uh, industrial area too so you have the Liberia Coca-Cola and bottling company is in Pinsville is in the Coca-Cola factory community <coughs> it's also right here in Pinsville and so Pinsville is also uh, home to the famous red light market the famous red light market Pinsville city is also home to the famous red light market uh, where buying and selling is done in noise Ben on your left we're taking a left turn we're taking a brief left turn uh, to the worldwide mission school where I registered and uh, because of some pressing engagement during the first round of election I did not vote <clears throat> because of some pressing engagement I did not vote during the first round of election but I've made my decision as a patriotic citizen and as a nationalist to cast my vote this second round and uh, we will go to one of the voting in information center uh, officers to ensure uh, that welcome Duncan uh, cast a relevant vote to ensure that welcome Duncan name is recorded in the annals of history and so kind of Oliver can will take over broadcast from here as I go through with the Our colleague, uh, as he anticipated to be a part of this process, uh, the voting process on uh, run of election day in Liberia, where Liberians from all walks of life will be trooping into the different places of uh, registration to have their votes in. And so, uh, this is the process we are into. Or work on is uh, in the process of verifying uh, whether or not his name. It's actually on the final FRR, the major, uh, major issue of uh, contention raised by those aggrieved political institutions uh, sometimes ago when the case was at the level of the National Elections Commission here in office and uh, subsequently at the Supreme Court of our country, the Supreme Court of Monrovia. So uh, we, 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 we're here. Uh, this is put in place number two. Uh, put in place number three, I beg your pardon. And so 
we we have the verification decks where his card is being verified uh, as to whether uh, he's a legitimate voter registrant here uh, in vote in, in in the polling place number three. Uh, but again, while he's in the process of doing that, we also have on the far end, on the right, uh, some observers from the two political political parties involved. Uh, and so uh, let's let's come close to them. Uh, we have observers from the uh, the two political parties, beginning with uh, uh, Guri Rin. Okay, we we're doing great. Let me. Uh, have a glance at your identification card, your King uh, P. Boyu from the CDC. Okay, so uh, King, uh, can you tell us how have the process been so far uh, from the onset of uh, voting day? Uh, actually, uh, the process is ongoing good and I think we, we love uh, what NEG has done this time around and make it very, very easy for us. So I think the process is going on good. Okay, so uh, on the overall, the process is, is going on correct. W was there any point in time where you noticed a voter uh, come into this place and they did not see their name on the final FRR and that voter was turned away? No, I, I didn't see that happening today. Okay, so I mean, in terms of coexistence, you have your folks there, I'm, I'm told they're from the Unity Party. Uh, are you guys relating in terms of uh, discussing the well-being of uh, this place as it relates to the process? Are you guys, you know, coexisting correctly? Aren't you guys into any form of confrontation? No, sir. Okay, so uh, during the course of the process, can you assure the librarian people that it's going to be very peaceful uh, in terms of verifying whether this vote is a valid vote or not? Yeah, 100% it's going to be very good indeed okay let's move over okay so uh, let's 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 move over again work on Duncan camera uh, let's try to get him uh, I'm told I'm told his process has been verified and so he's uh, work on now is is walking there we got to get him uh, our colleague uh, he's walking up I uh, to have his uh, and so he's moving on to have his 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 finger inked you know, as a way of identifying an individual who who have already gone through the process of voting. So he's about to make history, fellow Liberians, watching us across the world. Okay, so he just dropped it. There is no need to have a speech while voting. It's, it's against the electoral law. Uh, so folks, uh, there you have it. He he just got uh, got his vote in. And that is a secret. His vote is a secret. So uh, how was the process working? Uh, well, the process is very easy, it's smooth, and I must admit, this time around, the National Elections Commission did an excellent work with um, capacity building. Uh, there are actually more than required staff to ensure that you have a very smooth process. So, for, in for instance, the first person I contacted, uh, the voter information officer. Uh, all right. Okay, so uh, w again... Okay. <laughs> I think the, the, the voting the voting individuals <laughs> will come outside uh, yeah. to conduct our interviews. So I'll I'll get you with your interview. But fellow librarians, these are the situations we were being, uh, like 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 you know yeah. we, we were being accredited by. Yeah. the National Elections Commission for the sole purpose of election coverage mm -hmm. and when we were being given our accreditation cards and tags we were told to cover the process all over the country mm -hmm. and so sometimes uh, probably information dissemination is a problem in our country uh, probably I may not blame him uh, probably he did not get the information from his bosses uh, so he will go about saying it and just so you know folks around the world we are accredited media institution like you see the brand heart of him isn't one uh, fly by night media institution we are very very you know credible we are, we are credited to cover election matters but such is the situation such is, such is our country and uh, in, 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 in most most cases you have these things going on but again it's been a pleasant uh, experience we spoke with uh, you know uh, the the observers from the political parties uh, covering this process and they promise a very peaceful process uh, during the during the tallying process the promise that whenever the counting is going to be done uh, they're going to coexist as as brothers and sisters as Liberians despite being from different political divide and that is one important issue that is so unique to the process so again you're going to take a shot at the the ballot box uh, you know take a shot at the ballot box and and where in the folks around the war 
I can see what's happening. So we, go, we will continue to proceed to uh, all the precinct across uh, uh, this district, district number four, to be specific, in the Dupont rural area, uh, where Liberians, like I've always said over the period of this broadcast, Liberians from all works of life uh, will be determining who their president and vice president will be in uh, in just a couple of, uh, uh, of minutes, because we just have a 21 uh, plus minute after uh, 5 o'clock. Uh, so at, at about 6 o'clock, I'm told uh, by the electoral laws, the last person on the line uh, will, will remain there and the presiding officer at a particular a pulling place will go at the area at the back of uh, the last person just to ensure that no other person comes after him to do the uh, the, the issue of voting so at about six o'clock we'll start to see that that happening all across the country where uh, voters will will actually have the opportunity i mean the last minute voters will have the opportunity to go and vote within the time frame as enshrined on our laws so keep tuned we continue to move across we 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 are we're heading towards where our ceo uh, the CEO of One Media House Incorporated, I, I mean, currently he's, he's, he's at his voting place where he did his, 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 his voting and we are told he's, he's, been, he's been going through uh, the verification processes. I'm told by the time we get there, he would have uh, come up of the uh, the room where we'll have to give give you a clear picture of who our CEO is and that is uh, Honorable Benham Blue Benson but keep watching Hot TV Channel 12 uh, keep listening to Hot than 107.9 and keep you know viewing us across the world from your Facebook partner uh, wherever you are listening and watching Hot TV Hot than 107.9 so until uh, we hit the rule uh, keep watching this is the election watch
All right. Uh, oh, welcome back uh, to this live uh, run of election day coverage where Hot FM or Hot TV, the official voice of one media house incorporated, uh, Hot TV channel 12, uh, is coming to you live and direct via your monitors with this exclusive uh, run of election day coverage. Uh, making sure we give you a clear picture of what's happening in Liberia on the day when Liberians uh, will decide who become the president and vi vice president of our country following uh, the 12 years stewardship of Ellen Johnson Salif and Vice President Joseph Yomboika uh, who is also uh, on the ballot paper uh, uh, today uh, against former war best african best european best uh footballer uh, joshua and so we we are leaving uh, the dupont rural area at the worldwide mission school there uh, where our colleague welcome duncan was able uh, to cast his vote uh, to be part of history making where uh, this country where this country uh, in a matter of days uh, and if not by uh, the 16th or 17th of uh, January, more precisely the the third working Monday in January, we would have had uh, a brand new president sworn in, a brand new vice president, and uh, our 54th uh, national legislature in reference to the House of Representatives. Uh, and so, like we're going to say, on our way to this place, uh, this is not. Uh, interior Liberia. Uh, this is just the suburbs of Monrovia and Pinsville, uh, Dupo Road. Uh, you have similar roads in the southeast, in the northern part of this country. Uh, but uh, this is Monrovia. This is the suburbs of our, our capital. Earlier on, we showed you the most beautiful part of our city, uh, the Tottenham Boulevard, and all of the streets in St. Cor, ranging from uh, first uh, Street up to 24th Street. Uh, we highlighted the Congo Town areas. Again, we were at Pinsville, where we had to show you a lot more of some uh, recent developmental jobs being done there by our foreign partners, our investors, uh, those of whom have come from far and near to help us in the uh, the recovery process of our country. Uh, more precisely, the infrastructural sector. And so uh, uh, we here. Uh, welcome, Duncan. This is his terrain, and and he will do a lot more of the commentary here because this yeah, is right, right. this is where uh, this is where he lives. Uh, this is his his terrain, and so uh, the folks say to whom much is given, much is duly required. So uh, he's. Uh, much is duly required and expected, so uh, he's going to continue with the commentary uh, after here. Uh, but again, uh, we see the vehicle of our chief, our one media chief, uh, the vehicle of uh, one media chief, and that is Honorable Benna Blue Benson, uh, the chief executive officer of One Media House Inco Incorporated, the uh, the mother institution of hot fm channel uh 107.9 and hot tv uh channel 12 and so <coughs> we we're here uh approaching this other uh princey center and welcome we'll continue with the commentary from over this an angle all right thanks so much to my work colleague kind oliver kind for uh fitting in quite uh well when i was uh trying to do some technical adjustments
minutes uh, up to six o'clock. Officially, pools are supposed to close uh, around six p.m. And uh, we are at the Redeem International uh, Kindergarten uh, Center, where the chief executive officer of the One Media Incorporated, owners of Hot FM 107.9 and Hot TV Channel 12, Mr. Bernard DJ Blue Benson. He is a he is a, a Liberian entrepreneur in the creative minds industry and also in the multimedia industry, as you can see, uh, several uh, friends of his have, you know, also come. But let's get uh, Mr. DJ Bernard Blue Benson. And, you know, we're so excited that we can catch up with you through your business schedule. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you doing? Uh, How are we're, you doing today? we're doing I splendid. See, I've, been, I've been following you all through the day. You guys are doing a very good job. I'm proud of you guys, man. Seriously. Uh, we just can, uh, you know, express thanks to your able leadership and stewardship to you are the motivation for all of us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, how was the process? You enter and then you conclude up with voting. How was the process like? Uh, it, it, easy as one, two, three. I'm telling you. Uh, totally different from the last time uh, 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 during the first round where the lines was literally wrapped around the building three times and, and, and people was here till uh, I, I, as you can see uh, it's flawless right now I came out walking went straight to my room and it, it, it I, I think I stay here for the for about four minutes because I timed it totally different you know what I'm saying uh, uh, and and I don't know the call. I, I'm too, I was still trying to figure out if you follow my social media, if you follow me on social media, you know exactly what I'm saying, well, uh, 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 what I've been uh, equating this to, but turnout is totally far different from the last time. You understand? And you covered extensively, uh, not just in uh, Monrovia, but all across the county through your various uh, media services outlet across the country. You cover extensively the country. Right. Is this the same situation that is resonating across the country or is only in central Monrovia? Let me tell you something. We are getting uh, feedback uh, from, from our community outlets in Banga and Kanta. It's the same all over the country. It's the same all over the country. From uh, from Lofa County, we have uh, a correspondent in 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 in, in Vonjima. We have one in in Ganta City. We have one in Bikana. All over, even as far as Maryland County, the intra trucking was. Uh, look, I said it. This whole trucking thing, we, ha we I mean, we have to discourage it. This is the cause of this. Uh, the, a very low turnout today, and 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 I'm estimating almost sixty percent. Drop Trump. in the uh, in, 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 in in the voter participation. That that is bad. And as you you cast your ballot, uh, you yeah, say on. I I, I <laughs> yeah, there is it. There is it. And both of us, you know, uh, I did mine at the worldwide yeah, area, yeah. and you did yours. And let's come to uh, other uh, pertinent issue. The the issue about the the training. How do you think has the capacity building uh, of the workers and staff of the National Elections Commission contributed to the smooth flow of voters? This time around was perfect. This time around, there was no hitches. Anything, as you can see on the wall, I came out here, I saw my picture. When they, actually, actually, it's where I voted the first round, so I know I went right into my room. I was ushered in. Uh, uh, they checked my name in the voter roll, gave me my thing. I went back there, voted, Kim Cash. I mean, just as simple. The only difference from this time and the last time was the queue. There's no queue right here. And there are absolutely no queues, but yeah. All how, 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 long, how long did it take you to vote? Record less than four minutes, like you. I mean, uh, it, less than four minutes. Yeah, and and I think there's some neck neck uh, uh, NT their 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 services. As you can see right there, you see the police. They are there. Immigration officers are here. People are in there. If you go in there, people are there to help you. So I think they did a better job this time. Maybe, and 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 maybe it was because the crowd is not that overwhelming mm -hmm. right now. I think so. Yeah, but. But uh, uh, you know, from our from our new stake of feet, and and, and, and of course, uh, you can catch it live on Hot 107.9. Mm -hmm. This is the same situation all across the country. Low voter turnout, absolutely low everywhere. This is the same. Uh, we even just got news from Ganta City. Ganta City, mm -hmm. the same thing. There's no there's no voters at. So this at, is at not the, just a Monrovia issue. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And. If you look at your time, uh, 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 these look 
uh, if you can pan your camera yes, here and see, show the camera there's absolutely no line here. No cues. No cues. No cues. There are uh, absolutely no cues. And the time, I think we got only got 30 more minutes or 40 more exactly, minutes to see how uh, this thing close. Exactly 30 more minutes. So, uh, you know, I, I don't want to make no uh, a guesstimation right now, but this thing is swinging. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just swinging. And, and then we're in Milan. And you, aside from your regular, you know, um, Aside from your regular entrepreneurial work, you are a political uh, commentator. Satirically, you right. are the the host Absolutely. of the Blue Link Show, which is Liberia premier flagship sh uh, radio and subsequently this time TV show that add humor to the real issues. Right. Uh, as a political pundit from that uh, perspective, what are the contributing factors, one, to today's low voting turnout, and two, to today's smooth uh, yeah, voting process? And I'll answer the last question first. I think why it's contributing to how smooth it is, we only got two candidates that we're voting for right now. The process is so easy right there. You check one, vote for it up and leave. Uh, versus when we had to look through almost, like this district had almost like 27 representatives that you got to get the scroll, two sheets and, and all that. So it was more complicated. Now. What is contributing more to this low turnout is, I've been saying it a long time ago, trucking. We truck a lot. Well, the, the representative aspiring truck a lot to the de detriment of the presidential candidate. And this is why we say this. It's bad. You know, this is bad. We, I mean, they have to put something in effect to stop this trucking. And talking about putting something in effect, as uh, someone who's been around, what are your recommendations to the stakeholders in our political process, the National Elections Commission, and the uh, various political parties that have stake in our election? What are your recommendations? Uh, look, I'm not no uh, political scientist or anything like that, but I say have one day for the representative to vote, have one day for the presidential candidate to vote finish. Don't put presidential candidate representative. I know we're talking about this money, 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 money thing. But that is it. You know, and you know which way it go, the voice of the people will not be represented. I'm telling you. This 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 is sad. This is sad. During the last election up to now, uh, uh, up to this time it's almost five something the line was still all the way over. Where are the people? I, I I and I can guarantee you they're not dead. They, they didn't die. They're here. But you know uh uh, a representative took advantage of, of of the economic situation of those people, brought them here, and they can't bring them back again. I'm saying that one more while, but you know, I'm scared of nobody now. And that is DJ Blue right yeah. there. Uh, DJ Blue is uh, Bernard DJ Blue Benson, owners of Hot FM 107.9, Hot TV Channel 12, and a host of other radio stations across the country. Your parting comments before we take leave of you quickly. Look, I mean, uh, whichever way this thing go, I just hope we keep the peace. Uh, uh, we'll work with anybody, you know. Let's keep the peace. Let us let us be civil. Uh, and man, are you guys have lunch yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Thank I think you, so you need to make. Uh, I think you need to make a reservation for that, <laughs> so that we see how we can uh, uh, have lunch. But uh, we're approaching closure of our polls so we're thank just you, thank like you so much, thank you. okay we're approaching closure of polls in liberia we've been on this thing since uh since 9 a.m this morning going all across the various uh precincts and the various polling places across monrovia we went across uh Bujra island we visited clara town we visited uh the jamaica road area and all of those various areas and one story remains the same there is a low turnout of voters on today's uh, run of election day. Uh, like uh, Mr. Benson said, probably it's because a lot of uh, political candidates trucked people. And for those of you who are watching us uh, in the diaspora, trucking is a process whereby a political candidate aspiring for a particular position uh, goes into the community, get individuals that are not registered in his district for which he aspires to represent, get them, pay them some money uh, sometimes it's as low as 10 us bucks pay them some money they come during the voting uh registration period they register at different uh registration centers and then they are sent back to their original area of habitation when election reaches date of voting they are also brought back if the candidate has the financial means to bring these individuals back to cast their vote and what we've seen all across the country is a lot of those individuals who truck 
uh, voters to different, different uh, political electoral districts. A lot of them did not have the chance to win the elections. So there are a little over 984 candidates that participated in the election, the, the October 10 election, that participated in the representative uh, section of the election. And a lot of them did not get to win the polls. So since they did not get to win the polls, a lot of them could not fund the subsequent, uh, the subsequent return of those individuals who they truck during the first round of elections. So this is hugely contributing to the low turnout of voters. And secondly, one of the one of the issues that is also contributing to low turnout of voters, uh, like you can see, at all of the different polling places we visited, at all of those areas, the the election staff they are quite efficient. I voted in a record four minute time. I voted in a record four minute time. So it's quite easy. So those individuals who came to participate in the voting process, they were placed through a very efficient process. Uh, first and foremost, you submit your, your voter uh, registration ID card. They have a voter in information officer who's going to double check whether your name is on, a, on the final registration rule. After he double checks, if your name is there, he's going to refer you to another person and the, press, the process is just as smooth and as smooth and as smooth and as smooth as you can as you can see so the process is so much the process is so much uh, so much efficient and so much wonderful that people can just uh, carry on that process in record time all right so let's take a let's take a peep let's take a peep in the uh, in this precinct uh, this is the Redeem International Kindergarten School, uh, Rixie in Duport Road, uh, Painesville, District Number Four. And just you can just cast the camera. Uh, the presence of the police and the immigration service to ensure that law and order uh, are kept here. As you can see, one of the uh, police inspectors is also ensuring that his men are posted and also ensuring that everything goes on here properly. So we. We're going close to the closure of polls, and we're going close to the closure of polls. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, polling, polling is supposed to close at 6 p.m. as per the mandate of the National Elections Commission. And as you can see, the queues are free. The queues are free. October 10 of this year, at this time, you had lines all across the area. And we've continuously said the reason why you have a drop in the number of individuals that have come to, uh, to cast your vote is because a lot of those individuals were trucked from one area to another. Trucking is adversely affecting the border politics of our country. Those of our political people who want to gain an upper advantage over their competitors need to stop trucking individuals. If they don't stop, we will have an artificial support system base in this country that cannot be that cannot be tracked. And this is adversely affecting the system. Look at the queues. The queues are empty. There are no no people here to vote. And October, October of this very same year, at this very same time, this area was very, very jam-packed. And so, fellow Liberians, uh, all we can say, the process has been smooth. It has been one that is easy. It's been transparent. Although there are some areas where we went with our cameras, uh, and most of the the election, most of the election uh, staff, some of them don't understand that the media, the media is a partner in these. Events. 1749 GMT, 1749 GMT. And uh, at 6 o'clock, pools are expected to close in Liberia. And we will be paying short, short spring visits. We shall be paying spring visits at some of the uh, polling centers around here. One of the nearest polling places, the Nathan E. Gibson Memorial Academy, is close by. So we're going to be paying a very short spring visit at the Nathan E. Gibson Memorial Academy to see how far the process have gone over the period of time. It's Hot FM 107.9, Hot TV Channel 12, Stick and Stay. We'll be right back when we get to the Nathan E. Gibson Memorial Academy. Check. Check.
All right, uh, welcome back to Hot FM 107.9 and Hot TV Channel 12, uh, bringing you exclusive uh, coverage of the uh, runoff election here in Liberia. And we visited several polling precincts across the country. And uh, it's a couple of minutes up to closure of pools in Liberia. A couple of minutes up to closure of pools in Liberia. And we're driving to the Nathan E. Gibson Memorial Academy, one of the polling precincts in uh, Duport Road uh, in the Pinsville area, one of the polling pre precincts in the Duport Road uh, area. And we're driving slowly towards the uh, Duport Road graveyard area, uh, which is uh, the area just before the Nathan, Nathan E. Gibson. So we'll go straight, and uh, we'll go straight, and um, as we gradually wind down voting activity in Liberia, Liberians all across the country have all already started uh, commenting uh, that the process has been free, the process has been fair on the average. Uh, Liberians all across have been commenting that the process is much easier. Straight, we are going straight. The process is much easier uh, than was expected uh, during the first round of uh, election on October 10th. Right after we we leave the Nathan e. Gibson Memorial Academy uh, polling center, we'll have a brief studio chat. Uh, Oliver and I we're going to exegize and analyze. Uh, we're going to bend right. We're going to bend right. All right, so this is the Duport Road Junction. Uh, this is the Duport Road Junction. And uh, further in between here, they have a very famous uh, entertainment center. They have a very famous entertainment center where a couple of Liberians uh, over the weekend uh, come to enjoy social life. So we're going close to the Nathan E. Gibson Memorial Academy. It's a privately owned is a privately owned uh, school uh, which is a precinct is a privately owned school which is a precinct and the Nathan E. Gibson Memorial Academy is one of uh, the several polling precincts in District Number 4 Mansorado County and uh, fellow Liberians is 5 minutes to 6 by regulation of the National Elections Commission at 6 p.m. prompt at 6 p.m. prompt, polling supposed to end, voting supposed to close at 6 p.m. prompt. And we have just four minutes. We have just four minutes to 6 o'clock. And uh, we're making a brief uh, stop at uh, several areas in the Duport Road area, uh, trying to bring you up to speed with uh, election coverage. With election coverage in Liberia, certainly this is uh, this is Liberia's runoff election, and uh, we're we're having a wonderful time uh, cruising across the various polling places and and polling centers across uh, Liberia. But let's get to Oliver Kind. Um, let's get his, his insight on it as we try to as we try to make uh, some uh, technical adjustments on the other side. Okay, and so, uh, and so to those of you watching us across the world via our Facebook uh, portal, like what can we say, our Facebook channel, uh, through our official uh, page, the hot fm 1079com uh, on Facebook, and those of you watching us uh, locally in Liberia on Hot TV Channel 12, on your television uh, sets, uh, and those of you also watching us across uh, the internet uh, you are welcome and like welcome sir we have less than five minutes to the uh, official uh, time where uh, voting is supposed to be uh, stopping across the country but with a particular uh, condition and the condition is welcome and fellow Liberians and those of you watching us uh, at six o'clock on the dot like we we'll say in our country the last polling i mean the last voter in the queues the last voter on the line uh will remain there and the presiding officer at that polling place will go behind the last voter uh, just to make sure that no other person will join the line after six o'clock 
so in the event where we we have for example uh, 80 persons on the line and the clock uh, rings 6 o'clock uh, the, 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 the entire polling staff will ensure that all 80 individuals present uh, on lines will, will, will have their votes in uh, you know before the, 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 the center officially close. Alright, so this is Hot 107.9 FM and this is Hot TV Channel 12 bringing you exclusive coverage of the run of elections in Liberia and uh, as our time has been ticking and the clock has been ticking and clocking uh, it's just few seconds to the closure of election uh, run of election and voting in Liberia and we're so happy that we have been able to make several rounds across the country uh, we went as far as Brugero Island, Claritan, Jamaica Road and all those areas uh, uh, in industrial part of uh, Monrovia and now we're in uh, Pinsville, uh, a very quiet uh, suburb in, uh, in Pinsville, which is called the Dupo Road area. So we'll just uh, take we will just take uh, take a, a brief uh, we we'll just take a brief uh, stroll in the uh, Nathan E. Gibson uh, Memorial Nathan E. Gibson Memorial Academy. Uh, this is one of the polling precincts and. Voting uh, is expected to close at 6 p.m. And like the voting regulation, like the voting regulation demands, uh, once you have voters who have come to vote and they are not in the queue, they will be called by the queue controller to assemble in the queue to ensure that they are in the line when the time for voting to close. So now if you just uh, look in the line uh, this is one of the polling place if you just look in this line there's no one uh, okay there are two individuals there and I think they were outside and the the officer of the of the fire service like uh, inspector general Gregory Coleman said earlier this morning that there are going to be deployment of uh, uh, state security apparatus uh, like the fire service the library national police the immigration and other state security apparatus so we have uh, a representation of the library national fire service we have the library national police we have somebody from the Liberia immigration service and uh, the election staffer informed a lot of uh, the individuals there so what you can see is a brief uh, just a brief quarrel between one observer and the National Elections Commission worker and the cross of this observ the crux the crux of this is the observer had entered when the gate was locked when the gate was locked by the the, the security officer here So you can just take few. You can just listen to to them a, a few. Uh, few. Just listen. <coughs> All right, it's been settled now, and uh, it's been settled. Uh, uh, previously, it was an issue whether he should come in after the gate has been locked, and he's one of the observers, I think, for a political party or whatever. Uh, he's one of the observer from where? No, he's he's actually from the uh, the the president of Liberia, okay. and so this is what I was talking about, folks. Once it is six o'clock, the presiding officer at a particular polling place will go to the end of the line, stand at the end of the line, and every other emo, you know individual that is before the presiding officer will have that exclusive right to do their voting. But any other person coming after the presiding officer will not have that legitimate right to vote. That is the reason why you see the the gate there is being locked because you don't have a queue here, you don't have a line already in place due to the low turnout. So. And the gate is locked 
and he was trying to make his way in after the, the, the gate has been locked but I uh, you know owing to the fact that he's a media uh, observer and, and 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 accredited by the president of Liberia if you if you have to see his mm. his tech he, he's a colleague of ours uh, he's from the the PUL and that is the reason why he's been given a preferential uh, you know uh, treatment here like they will say in in, in, in every situation to every rules there are exceptions okay. and, and 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 but he's he's he's, he's been allowed in he's from the PUL uh, you know we all were accredited by the, the the National Election Commission and this is the same thing that he got and when you turn it back you all you always see you also see uh, Councillor Jerome Kokoya's uh, signature so uh, that is a clear indication we can vote anywhere as a matter of fact uh, on, until until probably where the rules have changed following the Supreme Court's decision but again we're here and so folks voting has ended across the country and we're going to just manage to talk to one or two persons so as to call it a day on this uh, outside uh, broadcast and live coverage on the uh, election in our country so we're trying to get some officers from the the the, the LNP but let's, let's talk to you our colleague uh, you've been here uh, observing the process since today you know what has been some of the issues that caught your attention as a media practitioner uh, I've been here yeah, since morning hour. By the way, I'm going to Winston Hammond from Shatter 102.5. Okay. And also a member of the press union of Liberia. Uh, I've been covering the district. This is District 4 in most of the county. And I've been there and I left. I went at a man's serial school where uh, two ballot people were given to one uh, individual to vote. And he was caught in the process as I speak to you. And the girl who did it at her name is Cynthia Bala. Cynthia Bala. As I speak, they are currently at the Labour National Police Headquarters going on an investigation. Okay, we saw we saw a photo circulating on Facebook where a lady, you know, from the National Election Commission was was being, you know, placing a vehicle and handcuffed. Where we saw two ballot papers, you know, uh, also indicating that those ballot papers were given to one individual who went to do his voting, and he was being issued two ballot papers. Is this the situation you're referencing? The same situation, on as I speak, and according to Cynthia, she she. She she said that she wasn't the one that gave the guy the two ballot papers. So according to the security guards or that they said, since each room is about one, I mean five hundred fifty ballot paper in that room, mm. they should wait after the checking. If the ballot paper um, is more than five hundred fifty, then this guy may likely maybe he took this ballot paper from someone else coming in there because Cinda refused to to, to admit to the allegation. She said she she wasn't the one that gave the guy the ballot paper. As I speak to you. Okay. All right. So why the case is at the level of the national police, we would like to leave it there. Uh, but uh, your own observation over the period, you know, since the onset, the genesis of the, today's activity, uh, were you able to observe uh, all of the different uh, polling places in yes. this the center yes, where they all occupied with observers from the two political parties? Yes. I spoke to many of them, and the two parties. Representatives, they were all here since money they've been here and they stay here. I uh, was in District 13, the same. I went to the Elizabeth Blount Memorial and Jurong High School where I spoke to many of the observers that all party have their representative at various polling centers. I speak to you, even the Mount Civil School where the incident took place. Uh, all party representatives they were all there as I sp because I spoke to them in those rooms. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk about this FRR, the final voter uh, registration rule. Uh, were there situations where uh, people came to vote? Uh, you know, you're a media practitioner. You've been observing the process where somebody came to vote, and their name and their entire information, you know, could not be found on the the final FRR. Were there any situation of such? My brother, uh, is like neck, neck, put the system into play this time around. Okay. What happened, what people experienced, in which my very self experienced the first election or two or ten elections, I never experienced it today, and many people never experienced it, because it was smooth. As you come, you see people sitting at the door. By the time they see your car, they say, go in this room. And when you go in this room, they check the F hour hour, definite, you will see that uh, your name is on the V, I mean the V hour hour. So everything was intact to feel all the police centers are visited. Nobody was complaining that my name is not here. I know where to vote. Everything was in order to just speak to you. All right. So thank you for talking to us. Well, nice talking to you, Winston Hammond from the president of Liberia. Okay, so Winston Hammond from the president of Liberia and also the uh, Shakta, uh, Shakta FM 102.5, uh, I'm told. Uh, the 
in Kirisburg, but they have their central studios on Ashmont Street in Monrovia. So we have some folks, uh, some gentlemen from uh, the National Elections Commission. Uh, good evening. Yeah, uh, how are you doing? Okay, I'm doing great. Uh, welcome to Hot TV Channel 12. You have been watched across the world. There are folks watching you all across the earth. Uh, you are. A national observer from the National Elections Commission. Uh, let, let's talk about to this process. You know, how have it been in terms of the turnout, in terms of uh, people identifying their their information on the FRR? You know, what, what was the process like today? Oh, actually, the process is going on smoothly, but the turnout is very poor, especially for the young one. Uh, we observed that the old, older one is coming in numbers. Uh, as one of the challenges we're facing uh, about the, the FFR. More people are not seeing their names, their photos, and uh, we talk to them that that's how the process is looking like, but they are going on smoothly, peacefully, they are not making argument. Uh, I think everything is okay. So you mean as, 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 as an observer from the National Elections Commission, there were situations where people came in here and did not see their, their names on the FRRIs, that's what you're telling us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, were you able to see political party observers in each of the rooms where votings were being done? Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so on the overall, if you were to grade this system, going back to the National Elections Commission, your central office, your bosses, those who sent you, if you were to grade the entire, you know, activity today as it relates to elections, what would you grade? You know, in terms of good, in terms of the process being good, being fair, you know, you know, being excellent, what would be your grading? Oh, the Creating system, I think it's one represent for next uh, and the people of Liberia because the process is going on smoothly. Uh, both sides are corresponding. Uh, people coming, voting. I'm not complaining. Some seeing a name on the FFR are not complaining. Going home smoothly. Uh, we coming as we, we did as ever. Both national and party coming, pretending the same and they are understanding. I think, yeah, the both party carry hundred percent. Okay, all right, thank you for talking to us. Okay, my brother, you will listen to him. Is there anything, you know, he said that uh, uh, you have an additional information to provide or anything he said you want to say something contrary to? You also are from the National Elections Commission, right? Can you tell the entire world listening to you, uh, watching you across the globe, can you tell them, you know, your name and uh, uh, which position you, uh, you, you are an observer, right? Okay, so t tell the entire earth, you know, who you are. Yeah, I'm Joseph Espoma. Yes, but now uh, everything went on smoothly, but just that uh, the turnover of people is very low. So yeah, so we're getting gray, getting gray neck, 90%, and the people we're having a gray neck from 1 to 10, I was giving them 5%. Okay, so, so you blame the people 10 uh, 5 5% 5 because the turnover was very, very low. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for talking to us. And so, uh, folks, we, we stay here uh, winding down this live election uh, coverage uh, where Hot TV has been doing very, very well. It's been very, very difficult. And so we're here uh, trying to round it up and we go into our vein and when we get to our vein. We'll continue to do more of the analysis on several, several of the touching points today. But welcome. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, l let's see if Welcome can talk to one of the officers. Uh, but, uh, all right, let, 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 let's speak with the immigration officer. She's declining. She's declining. So let's, let, let's move on to the Liberian National Police and see if she... If she uh, uh, no. Okay, you, 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 you took care of security. You know, you were in the process of ensuring that this place is peaceful, that this place is secure, so that the process can go on smoothly. You know, so were there any challenges, you know, that you had in terms of putting people under control, in terms of making sure that you stabilize the place in the event where the place became, you know, unstable? Were there any situation of such? Wow. Okay. And so, folks, the officer is 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 is, is declining to talk to her, but that's all right anyway. And so, we're gonna wind down here from this uh, uh, part of Monrovia, uh, district number of 14, Montserrat County, uh, district number four. All right. So, uh, omit the omit the one is district number four. Uh, welcome Duncan's terrain, and that is the reason why he's so acquainted uh, with all of the information. And so, it's been it's been a challenging, challenging coverage. Uh, it's been a challenging coverage, and so we're going back in the vent to do a lot more of uh, some uh, introspective analysis on the entire day's uh, coverage, uh, giving you all of the all of the informations, all of the informations as it relates uh, as it relates to. All right, so we, we we're gonna give you. 
uh, all of the information as it relates to uh, today's today's coverage, as it relates to today's uh, you know analysis and every issue we're able to see, we're going to give you an entire introspective you know analysis of every every little thing we were able to see today was on our way to central studio so it's been a, it's been it's been a wonderful 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 tour riding across monrovia with you it's been a very 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 inspiring and trust me though hectic but we were committed to ensuring that to those of you most especially those of you our diaspora uh you know uh, followers those of those of you who who got your hearts to this country those of you who are into the business of sending your folks your family to the western unions the nobel liberia the monograms you know sending your little resources your hearts are home you are thinking about what's going on in liberia and uh, if this country goes the other way around is your concern you're very very concerned because wherever like the folks will say wherever your money is is where your heart you will, will definitely be so it's been a very wonderful presentation so welcome all right so that's kind oliver kind uh, of the hard morning live <laughs> of the hard morning live fame and so we've been here uh, giving you exclusive coverage. We'll just take time uh, to talk to uh, members of our crew uh, that have been doing exceedingly well since this morning. We'll start off with uh, uh, the gentleman on the far left. He's uh, one very kind, humble gentleman. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Let the camera see your face. Good afternoon, welcome. Okay. Uh, tell the people your name and uh, what's your specific function on the team. Um, welcome, I'm Eugene Jones. I'm the sound engineer creating all the sound that you hear behind the scene. Okay. So all the sounds that our listeners and our viewers can hear you, this you see you see you see how talented the guy is? He's a, he's so he's guy. in charge of all our sounds and all the uh, ambience you can hear. Sure. Okay, next is uh, this gentleman, what's your name and what specifically do you do for uh, Hard FM? I'm James I'm James F. Colley and I also I'm a director on the program now. Okay. So, okay. so yeah. all of our programs, all the photographing, everything, he directs them. So yeah. tell the, the folks there, uh, hi and uh, happy, Merry Christmas and all the... Ooh. All our viewers around the world, not only limited to Liberia, around the world, around the globe. This is Hot TV, Hot FM, Channel 12, Hot FM 107.9. This is how we rule. We're just giving the public the unfolding information on our election day. Happy Christmas and Merry, 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 Merry New Year and Christmas and Merry New Year. Okay, that's uh, James F. Quali, uh, one of our, you know, our photographers here. And uh, this is the man. He's, he's the deal in the deal. Okay, tell the folks your name and what specifically do you do for Hard FM? Good evening. This is Aries G. There, Jr. The first. Aries, you gotta look at the camera. Uh, yeah, but man, look at the camera. So, what specifically uh, do you do to ensure that we bring the people live feed of uh, all the happenings across Liberia? Oh, uh, I'm the brain behind the whole setup you see here uh, going on today live on Channel 12, Hot TV, Hot FM. I'm the brain behind the whole source F. Yes, and this guy is so hard working. He's on to everything and he's jack of everything. That's our multi purpose. We call it multi purpose. So, what's your uh, parting comments for the viewers uh, who are watching this program and also the listeners? Uh, thanks for watching Hard TV Channel 12. For all of us, keep watching. Enjoy yourself. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you so much. And of course, we have uh, our IT uh, technician here. He's always, uh, you know, uh, very busy with the computer. We'll just take a few words from him. Uh, tell us your name and what specifically you do for Hard FM and Hard TV. Uh, <coughs> my name is, is uh, Joseph Do. Uh, I'm the IT te technician, Swisher. I uh, know I have a lot of job to do on a computer, so that would be so. <laughs> okay, you know the IT guys, they're not really uh, the talkative guy. We also have uh, huh, this guy, he's so hard working and committed, he's always around, willing to work. He has the, the nerve and the, the back of an elephant. And he also voted at the Len Miller High School. So tell us your name and what specifically you do for Hard FM. Oh, I'm Negan Sibe, Allies Nas Liberian Boy. I'm the uh, TOP for the high TV. I'm the one always making sure that we got good footages, good video, good picture, and a lot more. 
All right. So you see, young Liberians employed by uh, One Media House Incorporated, owners of Hot TV, Channel 12, Hot FM 107.9, uh, ensuring that we give Liberia a sense of Liberianness. And so, welcome, Duncan is my name. And um, do we have one person again to speak? Oh, not precisely, but let me just say this uh, to the public watching us. We are Hot TV Channel 12, Hot FM 107. That now, and let me just shout out to uh, Team Double Edge, Wiggle Ziggle, Stone Gray, who is in it, uh, the studio right now, and all of the cool members today that make our team successful. We say thank you, Merry Christmas, and a prosperous new year. And thank you for watching us, and thank you to the all uh, the citizens of Liberia for deciding 2017 fit. So, for now, a uh, few minutes, we're gonna know who the next president. So, thank you. And folks in Radio Line TV, we say thank you for watching. On the feature, we're gonna know who the next president is, anyway. <laughs> and so, folks, uh, see you on Capitol Hill on inauguration day. All right. Okay. Bro, bro, bro.